Hi, I'm Brad with the IHSA. Today's safety video is going to be about some of the hazards that you face while doing hoisting and rigging operations. Now there's a number of different factors that we have to be worried about, so this video is going to be more of a general overview of some of the hazards that you can face. Now one of the key things we need to understand about hoisting and rigging operations is this is not just focused on the rigging crew and the crane operator. This can be a risk to everybody on the job site, so we need to be really, really careful to take into account all of the different factors involved. Now when we look at at hoisting and rigging. Some of the main factors and the hazards that we want to look out for is electrical contact. Right? The number one killer of crane operators and rigging crews is electrical contact with overhead power lines. Other hazards we need to be worried about are struck by hazards. Now this can be caused by the equipment, where the equipment is moving around on site or the counterweight at the back of the piece of equipment. It can also be caused by the materials that we're hoisting and moving around. It could be done because of uh, poor rigging, it could be done because of improper movement of the load. So it's really important that we take into account all these hazards. So some of the things that we can do to help keep ourselves safe when we're working around equipment is to make sure that we stay clear of the crane or device that we're using for hoisting. Machines and people don't mix. Those two things never go well together, so we want to avoid those situations. You want to stay clear of the counterweight and off the deck of the crane or piece of equipment that you're using. If the counterweight of the crane can be a hazard to workers, then it has to be barricaded off so that nobody can enter the area. You want to watch out for the outriggers. While a crane or a mobile crane is being set up, the outriggers are going to be extended and elevate the crane. So we want to watch out for pinch points and crush points in those areas. Now we want to make sure when we're using a mobile crane that we don't set up on loose or soft ground. There's a lot of force generated when using a crane or a piece of equipment with outriggers on it. The amount of force pushed down on those outriggers is very, very large. So we need to make sure that the ground can actually withstand the forces involved. We want to make sure that a load doesn't pass over any worker's heads. We're not allowed to put it over a worker's head unless you're the worker that's receiving the load or sinking a shaft. So you've got to make sure you plan your route with the crane operator before the lift happens and make sure the area is clear of other workers. So we want to make sure we maintain the limits of approach laid out in section 188 of the construction regulations. This lays out the distances that we're allowed to encroach on power lines and we're not allowed to enter these minimum safe distances or the limits of approach. If you're in a position where your crane is set up in such a way that it can actually swing into the area, whether it be the load or the crane boom itself, within the proximity to the power lines, then the constructor has to make sure that they develop and implement a plan and procedure they have to be written and they have to show how they're going to stop the equipment from coming into the proximity for the power lines. Control of the load must be maintained at all times. If a worker can be endangered by the movement of the load or any uncontrolled movement of the load, a tag line or another device has to be used to be able to control that object. You always want to make sure that you lift within the working load limits of the equipment and the rigging. In Ontario, that means we, our rigging has to have a 5 to 1 ratio to the braking strength. Many factors affect the lifting capacity of the crane and these must be taken into account. We will have another video in this series talking about the lifting capacity of the crane, but one of the main factors you want to watch out for is the boom angle and the radius the load is in distance away from the crane. As the boom angle lowers on the crane and the load gets further away, the capacity of that piece of equipment is going to drop. So we need to take that into account when we're planning our lift. There are some general rules that we can think about for rigging that help us to ensure that the load makes it safely to its destination. The most important piece before you're going to rig or lift anything is to know the weight of the load. This is the key factor. You can't design any lift plan or design the lift until you know how heavy the object is that's going to be lifted. Now you can use all sorts of different methods for finding out the weight, such as shipping documents or load plates on equipment, but we can also do basic calculations. Now the one key thing when actually doing calculations is to make sure that you use a proper chart in order to be able to tell the weight of the object that's being lifted and the type of material that's being lifted.
upsize your rigging whenever possible and upsize your equipment if you can. You always want to avoid lifting to that working load limit because that's the maximum amount you're allowed to lift under ideal conditions in a factory setting. And we all know that construction sites are not ideal in factory settings, so we never want to lift to that working load limit. When using slings, ensure that the sling angle is not too low. And what I mean by this is as the sling angle decreases between our slings, our lifting capacity is going to decrease because excessive forces are going to be generated on those slings. Once we get as far down as 30 degrees as our sling angle, then we're looking at each sling carrying the entire weight of the load. Always stay at least 45 degrees for our sling angle. And this is a really simple check that you can do. As long as the distance between our attachment points and the distance between our attachment point and the crane hook are equal or the distance is less, then we know that our angle is going to be above 45 degrees. Now we want to make sure that we take into account things such as the weather, heat, cold, and moisture affect different types of rigging in different ways. So we need to take that into account. We want to make sure that we monitor the wind as wind will add forces to the load and generate excessive forces over the actual weight of the object. We want to avoid side loading our crane. This is when the crane is pulling on an object rather than lifting. Cranes and lifting devices are generally meant to lift straight up, not to pull an object. We want to make sure that we don't shock or impact load when we're lifting. What this means is when an object bounces in the sling or if it drops suddenly, this is going to generate large forces well above the weight of the object and this is a case where it has caused failures of cranes in the past. Signalers have to be used in certain situations, especially when any visibility is hindered in any way. Signalers have to be aware of the signs that are going to be used and they need to communicate with the operator to ensure that both of them understand the signals that are going to be used. We want to make sure that we lift within the capacity of the equipment and the rigging that we're using. Always follow the manufacturer's instructions for all equipment and gear. And always remember that people and machines don't mix. We want to make sure that we avoid unnecessary contact between people and machines at all times. Thank you for watching this safety talk. I'm Brad with the IHSA. Please visit our website at www.ihsa.ca and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more safety videos.